I don't know tea. Two. Probably need to figure out where to start. In my mind. You were in Mobile? Early on? Where were you when uh, World War II started? I was working in Tampa Shipyard. Tampa? Why did I think Mobile? Well, I went from Tampa Shipyards to Mobile. Oh, yeah? I was, uh, or for the Gulf Shipbuilding Company, which was making distributed and destroyers. And, and uh, that's where I was when I got my patriotic. Is that what it was? Hey, what it was? was? Enlisted. What, what it amounted to was that I went down to Union headquarters on Saturday to pay my dues and for my assessments. And, uh, There was a notice that they were recruiting uh, trained personnel to, to skill, skilled people, give people to uh, go in and rebuild utilities or had rework utilities. So I thought, oh, that's a good deal. So I'd volunteer for it, and I did. How old were you? I was uh, 20. Twenty-one. A mere child, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I quit. Uh, they begged me to stay. Of course, I felt like hell and I was going to go, and so I decided that I would. Kind of the, kind of the end thing then. Anyway, yeah, that, that was the thing yeah. to do, and so I... Uh, quit and we came back down to Tampa and I went back to Kissimmee. Well, I went down to Tampa and signed up and then went back home and for two or three days before shipping out. Shipping out. And, well, they just shipped me up to Camp Landing up here at Stark <coughs> where I was sworn in on the 14th of July, 1942. That was... Uh, July 22nd, the birthday, which there were 22 then, it would have been 22. Yeah. And uh, so they took me in there, gave me some shots and what have you. And that was in Tampa? That was recruitment in, place? That was in Stark, Camp Landing. Oh, yeah. yeah, Stark, yeah. And uh, shipped us up to Falmouth, Massachusetts, Camp Edwards. There was three barracks of people there that were all skilled labor, pipe threaders, plumbers, carpenters, welders, all fit, electrician. And one morning we'd been there. We didn't we weren't pulling any dues. We would just go eat, and come back, and no, no hang training on. or anything. Yeah, nothing, no, yeah. nothing going on. So. Yeah. They come over one morning early and says, when I called off this group of names, you go over here. Well, he called off a group of names, they went over there. And I called off this group of names, you go over here. And so he called off a group of names, they went over there. Now you're, com and then the rest of us are standing there. And he said, well, you're Company G, you're Company H, and you're Company I, the 36th Combat Engineer. Combat Engineer. So, Anybody know how to close order drill? Nobody knew how to close order drill. So they had an uh, acting PFC there. That <laughs> was acting PFC. Yeah. <laughs> he, he had basic training, so they, they... This wasn't a normal... Uh, this was not the normal way to do things. And this wasn't a normal uh, boot camp thing either, huh? Oh, no, no. Yeah. This was not... We had no boot camp training. Yeah. We were already formed into companies. Combat unit. So we we hung around there and we practiced making in, amphibious invasions or in, amphibious landings for about thirty days. I spent most of the time in the hospital. I got bronchial pneumonia, laying out all night. 
one of these invasions and hitting the beach and end up sleeping on the, in the sand. And uh, so I ended up with the pneumonia and got out of the hospital just in time to get back with the outfit. And they shipped us out of there to uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And Fort Bragg, North Carolina, we, we tied in with the 3rd Division. And uh, George Patton had made a big speech. He was They were forming the invasion of Africa. And uh, so they gave us, they, they sent us from there. Well, let's see. What did you do Fort Bragg? Just Fort time. Bragg. We, we, we uh, got up in the morning and ran a mile, went over an obstacle course, and then ran a mile back, and then had breakfast and police the area. And then they moved us out of the barracks and then the pup tents right out in the parade field in front of it. They were giving us close order drill, and they issued us rifles and helmets and gas masks. And uh, we were taught how to break down a rifle and how, to, how it operated. And then we uh, were given a three-day pass, and I went down home. Three days, huh? Yeah. Well, I caught a train out and rode all night to get to Kissimmee, and then. Caught the train back and rode all night, and of course I was late getting back, but uh, uh, what happened was it had a big flood in the north part, and there wasn't any trains, you couldn't, couldn't get back, so, you weren't the only one. so I wasn't the only one, so they didn't count us out wall, they just overlooked it. But, uh, Maybe uh, August, huh? This was in, uh, this was in September. Yeah. And, uh, first part of September, so they shipped us, put us on the trains and moved us up to Camp Pickett, Virginia, out of Blackshear, Virginia. And uh, we were there, we were in, in squad tents there. And uh, we went on one 25 mile hike. And we did close order drill, and did. Then one day they called us out and they're going to give us uh, uh, physicals, uh, which consisted of a short arm. Yeah. In space. And then, then uh, they caught us all up on our shots. I got six shots there in one afternoon. Uh, Were you with uh, the same group you had been pretty well with? Well, yeah, but you know, a lot of them had been weeded out. Yeah, the older yeah. ones had gone out. And, we did and brought in more people, younger people, and yeah, yeah well, they're making a younger unit out of it. Yeah. See, were, quite a, well, quite a lot of them were, you know, up in their 30s, 40s, <coughs> volunteers, and, and they they took a lot of them out and they brought in other people that were washed them out through the like the PT stuff, the training yeah. and all. Well, that. they no, they did well. They they washed them out doing that, but uh, I think what they were doing was they were taking the older people and getting them out of the way and bringing in younger ones to, to withstand the rigors of what yeah. they're going to put them through. Uh, it, it, became a, it became a unit of, of people probably, there might have been one or two that might have been 40. Most, most of them were in the 20s, yeah. uh, younger 20s. And, uh, the ones that were older, uh, they became non coms uh, In other words, they were the sergeants. Solely because of their age? Well, experience, maturity, yeah. and what have you. Yeah. They became the non coms yeah. and, and so uh, the rest of us, we were just the thundering herd. Yeah. And, and uh, so they put us on a train and... This, year, this is your Fort Pickett, right? We're, we're at Camp Pickett. Camp Pickett, yeah. yeah. And they you put, did. put us on a train, and it took us over to uh, Virginia Beach. Now, so far, you just had uh, training like at, uh, at Massachusetts, yeah. where you did your amphibious assault training yeah. for a yeah. month, and 
and then some uh, you know close order Routine drills and stuff. Drill and drill and uh, one twenty five mile hike. Uh, any any uh, guns, mortars, or any of that stuff. No, or at that no, point, it's still pretty. No, that was not. Yeah, not, that wasn't a part of it yet. Yeah. They took us, well, we went on the firing range one time, I guess, and yeah. fired our rifles, supposed to zero them in. And uh, then they, they put us on a train. We went to uh, uh, Virginia Beach. It was a big naval outfit out there. It was out in Norfolk, over Virginia Beach. And uh, it was a Navy outfit we, we went in with. We pitched up, up tents. And uh, what we were supposed to be doing there was being assigned and supposed to train with a, a naval landing group, a land party, which their, their duties were supposed to be on an invasion was to maintain communication with the Navy. And uh, that is, uh, what the material that was needed on the beach, the uh, boats that were incapacitated or needed assistance, or the uh, they would notify the coxswains on the landing craft what you know, needed like to be in. Yeah, well, yeah, but they were in charge of the beach itself, supposedly. <laughs> but they were navy. Or <coughs> they were navy. Yeah. They were navy. Yeah. And uh, so. From there, they put us back on trains again, and they took us to Newport News. Now, Virginia Beach, Virginia. you did some training there, right? Uh, not really. No. No. I got KP <laughs> and guard duty. Yeah? So, you've been in, what, 90, 120 days, and so far they just well, haven't no, moved we, around? Well, no, we haven't been in 90 days yet. <laughs> okay. We've been in... Uh, 60, anyway. 60 right? days, yeah. <laughs> and, and really no training. Yeah. Close order drill. At that point, are they... Uh, was U.S. officially in this thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were officially in war, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pearl Harbor, this was 1942. Okay, so this about. is a year, almost a year later. Yeah. Now. Okay. So, they, they put us on a train, and we got off at, at Newport News. As we're walking down the dock, I see the, the ship here, which is the old Exeter. They had renamed it. We had worked on it in Tampa Shipyards, and it was renamed Edward Rutledge. And I told the lieutenant, we were walking along, going down toward it, and I said, we don't want to get on that son of a bitch, it'll never make it. Why is that? Well, I worked on that, and I know it, it's bad shape. It's a dog, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Call a plan on it, and we're, that was a damn thing. So, uh, that's what we got on. And we went out and made up the convoy. There's about 500 ships in the convoy, and uh, we crossed the North Atlantic, and we fought, we met up with the group coming out of England, and we, we uh, ended up off the coast of Morocco. Uh, of course, we didn't know where we were. We, just kind of floating along and moving well, our boats around. The thing, thing of it was, is we we were told that uh, uh, we were going ashore. We didn't know how we we're going to be received. Uh, it was going to be a French possession, and that uh, <laughs> France, of course, was friendly. Well, our friendly side, of course, the Germans had defeated them, and we didn't know exactly who was in control. What there, right? what was going on? So. They didn't know how it would be received. Well, now, if you go back just just to your uh, all your basic training and all that, what what uh, what do you remember about that? Other than I mean, you, you remember any anything particular, specific, or just was kind of a it was a hodgepodge arrangement. Right? It, it was not. We were we were being trained. In, uh, what training we got was being presumed to be amphibious. We were not. We're, we're a bunch of kids, yeah, well, and nobody, nobody really and truly knew what the hell was going on. Uh, 
Including talking about the people that in, were running in, it? No, even the officers. Yeah. They, were, they were green as grass. Yeah. They, but most of them were reserve officers. Yeah. They, they weren't... Uh, Getting vague orders? They had, or, no, they had no real grasp of what, what was taking place. Right. And, and so there would never been, I guess, in the history of uh, a naval, big naval invasion, yeah. an invasion force. They didn't really know what was going on, but uh, so the training that we we'd go out, we'd, we'd load on these little LCVTs or LCTs, and they'd get out and they'd circle around in a little bit, and, and they'd make a run for the beach, and they'd run hit the beach, and we'd run out of the little things and up on the beach, and that was it. And that was basically what we did. And uh, they didn't have you dig in or learn no, to make no, fortifications we, we, we and any no, of that. No. Just form a defensive perimeter yeah. or anything like that. This is going to be OJT, you figured. Well, well that's <laughs> what it amounted to. <laughs> yeah. what it amounted to. So uh, we really didn't. I, I had no concept. It, to the point, I've told I think several times that uh, we hit the beach at Fadella, Morocco. November the 8th, the Navy had us formed up and they were out of sequence, so they pulled out to come back in to reform. And at the time that we they were reforming, <coughs> Roosevelt was making a speech being that the African continent, that at that moment American troops were landing on the shores <laughs> and they should be, the lights were on in Fidelity, you could see them. And all of a sudden, the lights started going out. Well, no, we didn't know he was making a speech. We didn't have. Did you know what you were about to do? I mean, well, they, no, we had no real concept of what yeah. was taking place. I mean, did, no. did they say this is where we're about to do an assault on Fidel in Morocco? No, and no. We it, you had an idea that you were going to do a, a landing. We were somewhere. going to make a landing, yeah. which was to us like we had been doing. You didn't just, be friendly and around. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. just like we expected them to be friendly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, well, I. I Ventured the same. I, I hit the beach with a rifle not loaded because people get hurt with loaded guns. You know, running around like that, There's a bunch of people. And uh, I, I I would say that more than half of the people that hit the beach that day, the rifle weren't loaded. Yeah. They didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But uh, we hit the beach and. and we'll go back. You say they were out of sequence and the lights. Well, were, the lights so were you're, on. you're sitting out here floating. We're, around. we're floating around out here in the in the ocean. And uh, Roosevelt's making a speech, which we didn't know yeah. that he was. We later found that out. Yeah. And, uh, that we're hitting the beach at that moment. Yeah. But we weren't hitting the beach at that moment. We were out there screwed Getting up. Ready to, yeah. yeah. And uh, we didn't hit the beach for another hour or so. Yeah. So yeah. preliminary, they. Well, the, there was no pre-bombardment, no. no, no, no naval gunfire at the beginning of the thing, yeah. because you know they didn't know if they were going to be received friendly or what. Yeah, you want to go pounding so them and find out that they're the hell out of them, and and uh, but of course they had battle, they had cruisers and destroyers, whatever. They there to do Prepare it with, whatever, yeah. But uh, they didn't, and so and of course we had no air. Cover either all, because yeah. we didn't have facilities for air. We had some uh, uh, oh, they call them mini uh, aircraft carriers, which had artillery and spotted planes and what have you. Because they, and the United States was new in this thing. Yeah. They, they didn't know what the hell was going on, really. None of them did. And so we uh, probably was hard daylight, it was after daylight, it was probably something like 9 o'clock in the morning before we ever got in the LCVP, so we make a run at the beach. And as we're making a run at the beach, all of a sudden people start shooting. You know, I was, well, hell, you know, not artillery, it was the Jean Bart was in Casablanca. That and, was a, huh? the Jean Bart. That was a, a French battle wagon, yeah. <laughs> and they had, uh, I think, 14-inch guns on it, 
And they, they could fire. Eighteen twenty miles, and so from where they were to where we were, they could fire. But Fidella was not that far away from Casablanca, yeah. so they started to fire at the uh, invasion craft. Well, Brooklyn then was a, a heavy cruiser, and so they started returning fire, and. and uh, then the destroyer started, and of course, as we're running for the beach, why well, these destroyers are running through and circling, and pull up and fire a broadside, and then come back around and fire again. But they weren't firing the beach; they were firing. Well, uh, we, when we ran into resistance, they started firing at, at Padella. Well, there was a. a, a Marine contingent, French contingent, and some German officers in Fidella. They just barracks. And uh, so they were the ones that, that, that uh, began the firing, or, or, you know, counteraction, yeah. defensive action. And so the destroyers, that's what they started taking up on, it was them. Uh, they were just small in, in the arms meantime, and stuff, or? Well, they had some light artillery, yeah. too. Yeah. And they start. They were firing, and and uh, the Jean Bark was firing, but Brooklyn had, was tying it up, and, well, there was a couple, you know, several cruisers that were out there taking care of it. And uh, then there was a uh, uh, aircraft, of course, uh, this time, you know, here we are with our guns not loaded, and uh, we hit the beach. It's the first assault. You you went up on the beach first assault. Right? Yeah, we're, well, we were up on the beach, and and we were trying to. Uh, the, the surf was so high that when these LCVPs hit the beach, the surf would just pound them right up on the beach, and hell, they wouldn't get get. There wasn't any way they could get off. So mounted. What it came down to was that uh, they made one trip, and that was it, yeah. as far as the Navy was concerned. By the end of the first day, they had no more landing craft. They were all beached. Yeah. And uh, so we had to take Fidella Port, the port of Fidella, and most of the ships were too big to bring in there. So you could only bring in something at high tide, and because at low tide, They'd, they'd be on the bottom. They'd sit on the bottom. And they had some old steam jennies there for unloading ships. That went, just one ship could make it in the harbor, just a little harbor. Yeah. And uh, anyway, that's what we started doing, unloading ships. After we took, took the harbor, but the first night, they told us that cavalry from Rabat was going to counterattack. And we'd dig in and defensive position, and hell, I, I dug a foxhole where it wouldn't quit, and five people spent the night in it that night. This and on the beach, or this was this in? was back over behind the beach. Yeah, yeah. I was off the beach. So you got on the beach, and that was pretty smooth going. Well, the first, first, first off, when we hit the beach, uh, run up on a dune line, some son of a bitch shot at me, you know, and I was ready to go home. That that wasn't those people are nasty, and then. We milled around and tried to unload ammunition and what have you to get things organized on the beach to get into something. The infantry, in the meantime, <coughs> was proceeding on in, and they took my, uh, Fidella. Uh, so that, that was the first day. First day they were fighting Fidella. Uh, but it was first hit the beach, just a few minutes after we hit the beach, the aircraft come over and stretched us. And uh, then we went on in, and like I say, the first night I dug this hole, which was close to the highway, uh, 
in on me. A little bit. The next morning, they told us we'd come up. We were going in, going into Fidelo. This was early in the morning, and then the bomber came over, and they started bombing. That's where I lost my rifle and the gas mask. Uh, I threw it in a slit trench that was dug there on the dune line, and uh, and I see this guy has been hit, and I went over and lay on top of him, and the bomb hit in the hole of my rifle and gas mask. One of the guys laying on top of the ground in the bomb crater, and one of them his foot sticking out. Well, we dug the guy out, and his foot was sticking out. And the guy rolled over and groaned in the bomb crater and got up and walked out. Uh, but what had happened, the bomb force had just, just, blown, just, him just blown his side of his hole off, and he rolled down in it. He was unconscious in the head, and the guy had buried alive. We dug him out. He was alive, but uh, he went back. His name was Kaplan. Somebody new, or he was one of the guys. Well, yeah, he was reasonably new. He was a company clerk. Uh, and he was affected by that. They brought me. He ended up. He, that was the last. Yeah, and they took him back. Uh, I bet he was. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you, think about it, you, know, you mean he was physically affected or just? I think mentally. Uh, yeah. Had he been buried alive even just for a yeah, few moments of being, right? yeah. 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 you got to do it. something to you. Know. Yeah. And uh, the only way we knew he was there is foot was sticking out of the ground. Yeah. And, uh, Anyway, we started back up the beach. You don't have to ride for a gas mask. Well, I picked up this, this guy that was laying in the hole I laid on top of him. I picked up his rifle. And it was full of blood and sand. It wouldn't work. I couldn't operate it. I sat down and beat on it trying to get it operating. It wouldn't. It even loaded. But I had it in my hand. And, and that's why I stepped around the tree and there was this officer with his pistol up and I whirled that rifle in his gut and he threw his hands up and I took his pistol and that's the one you got. And uh, of course I threw my rifle and then I got his pistol and I just don't work like that. And, uh, it's a good thing you know how to use that I suppose. Yeah, well I I, I had had I'd shot pistols yeah. back before. I'd, I'd hunted and I had yeah. Yeah, you have to assume if he was ready to fire it, that it was ready to go anyway. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we proceeded on into the town of Fidela then. And we talk about a bunch of scared, jittery people. That was us. Yeah. And we, I slept in the concrete floor in the bathhouse in Fidela then for a few nights. And we, Got some ships in and started unloading, get some stuff off to you to fight with. And from Fidela, then we were there probably probably a month. Then they moved us up on the Spanish Moroccan border because they didn't know if Spain was coming in or not. See, Hitler, look at that, huh? Germany had uh, helped the helped the. In the Spanish Revolution, he helped Francisco, or whatever his name was, to overthrow the monarchy in Spain. Yeah. And so they figured that uh, he would come into the fight on, on on the Axis side, but he didn't. So we outposted the. Uh, Spanish Moroccan border uh, to see if he's coming in. And he, like I say, it was in the court forest there for the Second Armored Division. And uh, so that didn't transpire. That was up from Rabat. Rabat, Fidela. Fidela is where we hit. 
So it's finished. Port right Leody. Right there. Yeah. Port Leody. The bot. We were up from Port Leody there. I think that. On the Spanish part, we were dug in along. In a cork forest there. The big cork trees. And we had, were there until they felt it was safe for us to get out of there. And then we took it on the train, you know, like 40 and 8, 40 men or 8 horses, cars, you know, you know cattle cars, yeah. livestock cars. It took us through the Patlas Mountains there, and from, from there, and we were on that train at least three days, maybe, probably longer than that, four days probably. And we had hay on the floor to sleep. They stopped every hour and went take sleep alongside the track or whatever. And we'd bring our food and we had emergency rations and we had it all in the cars with us. And that's the way we lived for about a week or so, going across, going across the mountains and into here. And of course, all along the road, in any town or whatever, they'd stop. Or there'd be all kinds of people out selling goods alongside the trains, and we'd buy fresh produce or whatever, something or not. We went on up to uh, Arzu. It's the Gulf of Arzu. Mm -hmm. Arzu was in there somewhere. In that, in that Gulf Bay. Sidigadechi. That's where we, we went in through there. And then they floated us back in and they took us into Tunisia. You got uh, I figured it'd be something here that this would be actually the uh, um, this is Lake Lazardi here. And this is the delta of the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. That's this this little section here, I think. Yeah, this is, is below up here. Ferryville. Yeah. Mature. I was there. I came into that. By the time you guys got in there, they had already taken that, had they not? Yeah, Under well... some resistance, that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We come in through Matur and then on into Ferryville, which is here. And we went up the west side, east side of the lake. What's that lake? That's Lake Missouri. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's Missouri there. And, and we come around and we were back up right, right across the, this slip from Bizzardi. And let's see, Carthage was back over in here somewhere. Probably okay. sitting on that map. That's a little better. Is that not the right the same thing? Triple A. Bizzardi. Kesserine Pass, that's the first place they got, they got the shit knocked out of them there. Who was that? The uh, 34th Division. Carthage was, I guess, out here on this point. That's how I went over and saw that. Yeah. The ruins. Yeah. And by then, I was a sergeant. Because yeah. your promotions yeah. and stuff, yeah. Eh? yeah. Well, from 
uh, from Fidela to uh, to Tunisia was that just that was just a ride then, huh? Well, more or less, we were at aircraft and and we're bombed and and uh, it, more it was establishing it, it was establishing control yeah. of the territory yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and met more or less in defensive areas, defensive position. Not there was no action to speak of except air raids. Yeah. But uh, see, we we didn't have air superiority. We didn't have anything. We didn't gain air superiority till we were up in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did. Uh, after after Africa, we, we, we gained air superiority. There's Bizardia, Tunis. More stuff. You probably ready for bed anyway, huh? No, we'll be wrong. There's uh, well. Uh, I say this may have been Algerian Tunisia. Who are you with? Where I was with Third Division, most Third Division. Yeah. Are you looking to uh, see if this what what uh, other stuff? Seventh Seventh Corps. Have to kind of find your way around on all this, try to figure out which uh, which of these things were heading before, and uh, this is all south. Yeah, with the... Yeah. 